Jones, now we're in the middle again. Oh, that sounds beautiful, Mormon. All right, so I'm going to back away from the station a little bit so I can make a recording. And yeah, we'll see if it sounds halfway decent. By the way, I don't know if you can hear too much road noise. Speeding up here in reverse. Full throttle in reverse. All right, now I'll slow down. All right, well, that's what we got right there. And that's, uh, that's the session file that we use at the base with a little bit of a difference to make it work in the mobile break. Yeah, that sounds good, Marvell. And that noise, I can only hear the background when you kick it up, when your RPMs go up. When they settle down, it's totally gone. Right, sure, good deal. Wow. Oh, this might be the best setting. Yeah, I couldn't make this session file work with the stock mic. And it wouldn't produce the bass. But now I have an abundance of bass. <laughs> so I think this mic is a better choice. The uh, studio type mic is much better than the stock mic that comes with the radios. Yeah, Roger that. Yeah, you, now it sounds more like the bass than you did before. It's got a bigger, fuller sound. Not quite as good as the bass, but damn near close. Roger, right, sounds good. Yeah, that's probably subtle equalization. And uh, I'm going to save this probably and in, in all that before I make any changes there. But uh, probably some subtle equalization changes. And, um, but yeah, in the headphones, it seemed to sound good. And if you like it and you say it sounds pretty close, I'll buy that. That's great. Yeah, Roger, I got you at a good seven steady on the uh, on the signal. All right, what I'll do now is I'm going to drive over to the bass and I'm going to key the bass up and uh, let you hear the bass right after this. So we'll see what happens. So um, that's what I'll do. I'll go drive back over to the shop over here and see what it does. Uh, Joe. The never-ending quest to make a good-sounding mobile. Uh, that's for sure. Takes a lot of work, but when you get it done, you got her done. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm in front. Let me go inside here. I know. to turn off the speaker in the mobile so it uh, went into full-on feedback mode to bring. Yeah, I heard it. Anyway, now I'm in the base. And, um, uh, yeah, what, what would you say the uh, differences are to bring? Well, the signal's actually lower than it was in the mobile. You have the, you have the righteous seven, now you just almost one S unit under seven. Uh, on the base. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, um, the difference in signal strength isn't a, so much of a worry because um, um, I'm running uh, the amplifier in the mobile, uh, the 2 by 8 key at about 120, 130 watts, a dead carrier. And then in the mobile, I mean, in the base station here, I'm keying... Uh, eight watts. Oh, uh, Roger that. That's a difference then. But the audio, as far as the audio quality goes, they both sound pretty close to each other. Oh, yeah. And it's plenty loud. Oh, yeah, plenty loud. And, uh, like I say, they're almost matched up. Uh, it's your good deal. All right, well, that's a good place to stop for a while. I've been messing around with this dug on stuff for the last what hour and a half almost two hours and uh i saved the old mobile session file but uh i got this one in here i'm gonna go ahead and save it and uh then get looking at some irrigation stuff i've got a bunch of uh i gotta put 10 risers in not risers but uh you know valves for three inch lines 
from the field. I'm going to put a hundred, a uh, hundred uh, rainbirds on uh, hook and latch lines. So I'm going to put two sets of five, uh, one on each valve, and I'll have two lines coming out. And I've got five rows of uh, hook and latch. And I'll water half of them one week. And then the next week, I'll move the lines, water the other half. And back and forth for a while until I figure out exactly what I want to do with that little patch of land. But uh, I, want to, I want to regrow all the grass out there where the septic, uh, where the leach field was dug up and put in. Make that look like the rest of it to break. Roger that, Norma. Got to be busy, that's for sure. Oh yeah, you know I I was wondering, <clears throat> you know I looked at the, uh, the the fittings today this morning at uh, Cal Coast Irrigation, and uh, they wanted eighty eight bucks for a uh, a uh, a female hook and latch to male threads three inch, and uh, I was like no way, so I think I'm going to get some female ends from discarded pipes, some bad pipes. And it turns out that the outside diameter of the of the aluminum pipe is just a hair smaller than the inside diameter of Schedule 40 PVC. So if I cut myself about a one foot or so or 18 inch long piece of PVC, then cut the pipe off at about 16 inches or 17, 18 inches, then put glue or epoxy all the way around, maybe even silicone, I don't know. I'm thinking silicone and then put a set screw in it so it won't separate, right? Because the pressure, if it builds up pressure, 60 PSI, if it builds up pressure with that much volume, it's gonna wanna separate, even with the glue, maybe. So I thought, well, maybe I'll put a couple set screws in it and put silicone around them so they don't leak. And then that'll hold it from slipping apart, and then the silicone may seal it so the water doesn't squirt out. And of course, if it's trying to get out the heads, it, it shouldn't have any more than about 60 PSI in the line. And uh, so I'm thinking about doing that. I'll make 10 of those. And, uh, and then I have a place to hook in my hook and latch lines. So that's the, uh, that's the thought anyway. Oh, that sounds good. That's, that screw idea is uh, real good. Yeah, as long as you get the uh, silicone around the screw heads and all that, you'll be, and your glue in there, between the uh, set screws and the glue and the silicone, you should be good to go. Roger. I'm thinking about using the silicone itself as a glue. You know, get some of that uh, uh, silicone and squirt it, around, you know, smear it around the edge of it. And when I slip it in, it'll kind of sort of, I'll twist it and it'll bond all the way around. And then when I separate it, it'll set it all the way together, put the set screw in it, and then tilt it downward so that the gravity will make the silicone kind of puddle or pool, if anything, if it's going to move at all. I thought about using epoxy, but I thought, nah, silicone should work. With that much surface area, you know, let's say, say you glue about eight or 10 inches of it in there, and then put like two set screws with silicone around the, under the heads and, and in there, that should hold it pretty good. Oh, I would think so. Anyway, that's the thought. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this water gate here and uh, 